there, we're going to be talking about eyewitnesses, evidence, eyewitnesses that have seen the things of God, that are witnesses, and it has been written down in the Word of God, that we're not just believing some fairy tale, but we are believing the truth, and it's written down in the Word of God, and let's touch base with some of these people are, that are bearing witness to the things of God. Now look at the scriptures there in St. John chapter 20, verse 30. Charles is getting up on the board in a minute. Here we go. St. John, here we go. John is speaking. He's speaking to us. He's speaking to the people of his day. And he's saying there are also many other signs and miracles which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. So there's many things that God has done, many things down through the years that's not written in this book. Many things, many signs, many wonders. Now I want to get this across to you. In the book, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus was with the disciples. He was with the people. He was with them. But in the book of Acts and the epistles, he's in us. And somebody said, Hallelujah. Say, he's in me. Say, you've got to start believing that. See, it's not trying, but it's believing. Everybody say, believe. believe. All right. Do you believe that he's in you? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you believe he's doing a work in you? Yes. Very good. Now you're on the right track. Now look what it says. Next verse, 31. John, there we go. But these are written. These are written. These things, these, these, this testimony, this, the Word of God. These things have been written, recorded in order that you may believe. That's how important the Bible is. Not, not believe what I tell you. Not believe what anybody else tells you. But you believe what is recorded in the Word of God. That's why sometimes we have to unbelieve some things to believe the truth. Sometimes we've heard things way back. How many has ever heard some things way back that you've had to unbelieve since you've been here to Shield? Okay. All right, I know you have. Notice this. Recorded in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. It has been written that you might believe that Jesus Christ is the anointed one the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon Him, you may have life through, in His name, through who He is. So we have life through Him. I live and move and have my being because of Christ. And these things have been written that we might know, that we might believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, John is testifying we're talking about eyewitnesses testifying what they know and what they have seen. All right, now we're going to go on with this message real quick. I'm going to be using a lot of scriptures. And I want you to turn now, if you will, to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1 and 4. Luke chapter 1, 1 and 4. My purpose is, and Luke is talking, Luke wrote the book of um, Luke and also the book of Acts, and he's saying, my purpose is that you may know the full truth and understand, now he's talking to us, he's talking to this particular man, talking to everybody, every Christian, every person. My purpose is that you may know the full truth and understand with certainty and security against error, the account, historics, histories, and doctrines of the faith of which you have been informed, 
and in which you have been orderly instructed. So this is a purpose that the Word of God was written, that we might know the full truth. All right, go to the next verse. Wait a minute. Is that, was that, I want it, uh, verse 1, Luke 1, verse 1. Back up. All right, here we go. Now he's writing this. Since, as is well known, many have undertaken to put in order and draw up a thorough narrative of the surely established deeds which have been accomplished and fulfilled and, and among us. So Luke is writing this down that we might know and, under, and understand what has been done. Go to the next verse, verse 2 in Luke. Exactly as they were handed down to us by those who from the official beginning of Jesus' ministry were eyewitnesses. Everybody say eyewitnesses. eyewitnesses. And ministers of the word, that is of the doctrine, doctors or teachings, concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God. Now, that is so important to meditate and realize that we are believing eyewitnesses, people that have seen Jesus, people that have seen his miracles, people that touched him, people that sat down and ate with him, people that saw him walk, people that saw him crucified. These people are eyewitness. Now, you're going to meet people today, and they're going to say, well, you know, that's just a bunch of bull. Well, are you going to believe them? Or are you going to believe eyewitnesses? People that was there and saw it. Now you make your mind up. I've already made my mind up. I'm going to believe those that were eyewitness. And those eyewitnesses recorded it that I might believe and have eternal life. Let's go to the next verse. It seems good and desirable to me. And so I have determined, now Luke is speaking, also, after having searched out diligently and followed all things closely and traced adequately, accurately, the course from the highest to the first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theodolus. Now, so Luke has taken his pains, I've taken uh, time and said, I'm pu- I've searched it all out and I've written it down that we might know and see what they saw, what they they had eyewitnesses, and they wrote it all down very carefully that we might believe. Now that really strengthens my faith. We're not believing some fairy tale. We're not believing some guy off the wall talking about Jesus Christ and one thing and another. No, we have eyewitnesses that have honestly searched it all out and wrote it down that what? That we might believe. Okay? That's very important. Now let's go to 1 John 1.4. 1 John. That's way over there in back of the Bible there. 1 John 1.4. Here we go. He's got it on the board. Now let's build our little case here because this is important. And we are now writing these things. Why are you writing these things? I like to ask questions, don't you? (laughs) To you so that our joy in seeing you included. So John got a lot of joy in seeing other people included in what he's experienced. May be full and your joy may be complete. You know, the joy of the Lord, of course, is our strength. And I want to say this. It hasn't always been that way in my life. But as I read the Word of God today, joy is something that springs up in me. I get excited. It's not a human excitement, but it's my spirit man that is excited when I read the Word of God and God makes it alive to me. Okay, It really energizes me at my age because all of you folks are young and you're probably still... uh, drawing from the human uh, flesh part, but when you get up a little older, you'll start switching over to, to high tech. You'll start switching over to the power of the Spirit. Okay, 
And I know some of you already switched over to that. All right, let's go to the next one now. And this is the message, the message of promise, which we have heard from him and now are reporting to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. No, not in any way. Now I want you to look at that. The message of promise. When you read the Bible of God, there has been a covenant. And in this covenant, are you listening, there's many promises. Yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Within, those, within the covenant, God made a promise to Abraham. And many promises to Abraham. He makes promises to us. Now all these things have been written that we might know that we have eternal life and that we might know that we have promises and we have to know how to appropriate those promises that God has written down for us, which is in the covenant, by the way, he swore by the covenant by his own name. I want to say that again. He swore by his own name that these promises are true. This covenant, New Testament covenant, is true. Old Testament covenant was true. He swore by his own name. Now, there is no other name higher than his name. So he swore by the highest name in the universe that what he has said is true. Now, here's where it boils down to. Either man's going to believe it or disbelieve it. Now, I believed it for 55 years, and I have drawn a lot of these promises and experienced a lot of these promises, and so have you. If you haven't, you need to connect on. You need to get connected into Christ and believe that He is the Son of God. Believe that He came and died for sinners. Believe that He is the same today as He was yesterday. So we're not just believing some myth or somebody sat down and had a little itch or something and they figured, well, let me interpret that itch and wrote it down for you. We're believing truth. It's been recorded. Eyewitness men and women that eyewitness the resurrection of God. So we, 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 we go forth on that. And that is verse, is that verse 3? Verse 5. Okay, let's go over, if you will, to 2 Peter 1.11. 2 Peter 1.11. Or back, 2 Peter 1.11. All right, here we go. The reason I had to come over here because that fan blocks me out. Thus there will be richly and abundantly provided for you your entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right, go to the next. So I intend always to remind you about these things. Although indeed you know them and are firm in the truth that you know and hold. Many times a preacher or a teacher will teach something you already know. But as he continues to teach it to you, you're more grounded into it. And God can give you more other aspects of that truth that you didn't have last week. But being that you're here today, you're going to see another aspect of it. So we have to continue to notice what he says. Remind you, I intend, Peter is speaking, I intend to remind you. And we're to remind each other. Susan, I love you. Susan, we're going to heaven when we die. Church, you're believing in Jesus. You believe he's the Savior of the world. I remind you, you have eternal life. So a lot of times we just simply remind each other. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And every time I hear it, I get more excited. I've heard it thousands of times. And every time I hear it, it brings joy into my life in a more greater way. All right? And let's move on to, uh, let's see, I want to move down a little bit. And, uh, okay. Let's go to uh, verse 16 now. All the way to verse 16. Same Chapter, verse 1, verse 16. 
Now, he, Peter is speaking. He said, now listen, we were not following cleverly devised stories when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. But we were eyewitnesses. Say, Peter was eyewitness. Now listen, we are listening to somebody that's talking to us through the word that was an eyewitness to Jesus Christ. Now, people got to stop. Either, Peter, you're the biggest liar in the world, or you're telling the truth. And that's what we got to decide. Is this just a myth? Is the, is this the Word of God just a myth? Is it just a, a, a story that somebody made up? But well, wait a minute, we have an eyewitness. Now, either you're lying, Peter, or you're telling the truth. Well, I believe he's telling the truth. How many believe he's telling the truth? Now you're on the right track. How many believe he's just blowing wind? Nobody believes he's blowing wind. That's great. He, it's the truth. All right, so we got that settled. But we were, we were, you mean there's, there were more than Peter? There were some other folks there that was around Peter. Well, what did you all do? We were eyewitnesses of his majesty, grandeur, authority of sovereign power. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Peter said, listen, I saw him. I heard him. I spent time with him. Wow. Hmm. Well, I think I believe Peter, and I don't think I'm going to believe Professor so-and-so down at the university. How many are going to believe Peter? How many is going to believe Dr. Uh, doodly do? See, you've got to decide that in your life. You can't be wishy-washy about this thing. Drive the stake down. Man, I'm sold out all the way. I believe the Word of God is the truth. And I've experienced it in my own life. I can bear witness to a lot of things that God has done through me and for me and other people. But right now, Peter's got the stage. Let's go to the next verse and see what he's got to say. For when he was invested with honor and glory from God, talking about Jesus, the Father, and a voice was born to him, a voice. Who spoke? Anybody have any idea? God. Whoa, do we have an eyewitness? God, the Father, is speaking? Now look at what Peter says was born to him by the splendor, majestic glory in the bright cloud that overshadowed him, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased and delight. Now let's stop and break that apart. Now this goes back to when Jesus and his disciples, three of them, was up there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Y'all remember that? Hmm? And Jesus I mean, is caught up with two other prophets, Isaiah and Moses, I think it was. And the disciples were there. And the disciples are bearing witness. We heard God Almighty say, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now, brother, if that don't drive a stake down for you, I don't know what will. You mean God testified? God himself testified that this Jesus is his son? Yes. Boy, what a witness that is, you know. I think I'll just quit, quit doubting. How about you? I mean, God got in on that. He's testifying that Jesus Christ is his son in whom he is well pleased. Boy, that's powerful. What a what a. Uh, what a, a time that was. Now let's go on a little bit further here. Let me finish here. To the next verse. See what it says. Verse 18. We at, now here's what Peter's saying. We, well that's Peter and whoever was with him, disciples. We actually heard this voice. How many has ever heard it thunder? Let me see. Are you sure it was Thunder. Are you sure it was thunder? You know, that might have been the voice of the Lord. 
saying to you, this is my beloved son or this is my beloved daughter who I am well pleased. So you say it was thunder. Okay. Now, they heard the voice of God. And it bored out of heaven. For we were together with him on the holy mount. Well, that's the holy mount, the mount of transfiguration. Wow, there's a lot of witnesses. You know, even God got in on this thing. Boy, that strengthened in my faith real quick. How about yours? Huh? Does that strengthen your faith? I mean, God is born witness. Wow, that's powerful. Now, Mr. or Dr., I've got to watch myself here. Hamburger. I ain't going to pay no attention to him. When God has said, now listen. Now, what you think about it? Everybody say, think. Boy, that's an exercise. If God said it, who is not a man that he should lie, if I doubt it, oh, don't be ugly, Bob. If I doubt it, I understand you guys. I said, if I doubt it, what am I doing? Somebody tell me. Calling God a liar. Anybody out there? <laughs> Come on now, let's, let's get down in this thing real good here. We've got a sure thing here. We want to get anchored in it. So that should clear all doubt. Now, we've got plenty of other witnesses we're going to talk about. In the... Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, let's go to the next verse. Go down to 21. We're on the... All right, we're on 19. And we... We have the prophetic word made firmer still. You will do well to pay close attention. Now, Peter is saying, listen, now, we've already shared quite a bit with you here. I mean, God's already gotten in on this thing, and he's already told us who this guy is, Jesus. He's the Son of God in whom I am well pleased. And, and Peter, James, and John was up on the mountain, and they heard it. And, uh, and now Peter is saying, now, listen, we better pay close attention you will do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp shining in the dismal, squatting, squatting, whatever, and dark place until the day breaks through. The gloom and the morning star rises, comes into being in your hearts. So in other words, we want to pay close attention to what these witnesses are talking about and saying until the doubts and the darkness breaks out of our being, and we really see, gosh, he really is the Son of God. I mean, God has testified that he is the Son of God. Woo! So we better pay close attention to the prophetic word. Let's move to the next verse. Yet first you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of any personal or private or special interpretation, loosening or solving. In other words, this is a true word of prophecy. It's a true word of prophecy, and we better pay close attention to it and listen to it and believe it. Let's go to the next verse. For no prophecy ever originated because some man willed it. So he's clearing some things here. He said, listen, let's bring it down where we can understand it. This didn't come from man. Yeah, God used man to pin it down. But it came right by the Holy Spirit as they were moved by the Spirit of God to write this down. This is a true prophecy and prophets about our Lord and things yet to come. So we better pay, especially in this day, this last day we're in, because there is about some things are about to happen here that's going to get the attention of a lot of folk. 
they're going to get off the doubting train and get on the train that are really believers. They're going to believe that this word is true. So, for no prophecy, and, and Peter's talking, ever originated because some man willed it. Well, I think I'll just sit down and write this story out. Are you kidding? Ah, no way. Look what it says. To do so, it never came by human impulse. Well, if it didn't come, what did it come from? But men spoke from God who were bored along, moved, and impelled by the Holy Spirit. See, we must understand that, 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 you know, and I deal with a lot of people, but God is real. <laughs> he, he's real. Uh, and, and, he, and he says what he means, and he means what he says. And it's not something that man sat down and say, well, let me see. Let me write this down. No. No prophecy came like that. It came straight from the Father, and he wants us to know that we'll be ready when he comes. Because when he comes, ain't no way of trying to get it together then. Too late. You either, we either going up or we're going to stay. And the decision is ours. This word is true. The prophecy is true about Jesus Christ. There are still people today that are grinding and, and, and their opinions of, well, you know, and hogwash. God has spoken. It's up to us either believe or throw it in the trash. I tell people, if this is not true, I'll tell you what let's do. Like, like Paul. Paul says, there's no resurrection. Let's eat and drink and be merry. We'll turn the parking lot and we'll turn this place into a honky-tonk. Well, there's no resurrection. Why not just let the good times roll? Let the good times roll. Because when you die, that's it. But that's not what the word of the Lord says. The word of the Lord is true. And it pays for every individual to pay attention to the prophecies that's coming forth. Okay? Boy, look at that scripture. Mm, what a powerful scripture. Let's go to the next verse, verse 22. I got to move. I'm just getting started. Well, let's create one. <laughs> what Bible you got? The wind must have blew it over. Okay, so that's the last one. Okay. Well, this is it. it we're, I'm having a hard time. All right. What is that? Verse 1. Let me see. Oh, you're in 2 Peter 2, 1. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's go to Matthew 17. Real quick, let's get over there. Matthew 17. Now you remember, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Jesus was with the disciples. But where is he now? Well, he, we know he's seated at the right-hand side of the Father, but where is his sp spirit at? In us. They did not have Christ in them. We have Christ in us, and we are in Christ as his children. So, hallelujah. God is blessed. Okay, 17. Let's start with verse... It's all good. Let's start with verse 1 real quick, and we'll read real fast. Here we go. And six days after this, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother, and led, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. I love that six. After six days, 6,000 years, we are going up. Put a little prophecy in there for you. Six is the number of a man. So anyway, on the six days, they went up on the mountain. 
How many of you understand what I just said? Let me see. Did I lose? How many? Let's see. All right. Keep coming. We'll go over the whole thing for you. <laughs> Don't have time today. Six days in the scriptures is really important, and seven is too. All of the days are important. And his appearance underwent a change in their presence. I love that. And his face shone clear. Now, here's eyewitnesses. These people, even though it's recorded, James, John, and Peter, and Matthew is pinning this down. They're eyewitnesses. They saw the Lord's appearance change. I was praying for a woman years ago up at Montreat, North Carolina. And I've saw this a couple of times in people. And as I was laying hands on her and praying for her, her appearance changed. She began to glow. I mean, really glow. Now, we've seen people glow to a degree. I see a certain amount of degree of glow on people's face as they're filled with the Spirit of God. But I mean, she glowed where it just radiated out. And, I, and there I was praying, and I looked around, everybody was praying. I said, hey, hey, <laughs> come over here and look at this. Come in. I was trying to get these other people to look at it, you know. And a couple of them did. They, oh, my goodness. I mean, she was just glowing, glowing. And somebody said, Amen. good. <laughs> Sometimes when I share things like that, I just feel the unbelief. Maybe it's me. <laughs> you just got to see it. Oh, boy. When you're an eyewitness to it. Wow, man. Wow. I've seen that on my wife. Just glowing. Powerful. Ha, ah, all right. And his appearance underwent a change in their presence. And his face shone clear and bright like the sun. And his clothing became as white as light. Lord, would you let that happen to everybody in this assembly this year? Thank you. Ooh, turn it down. Oh. Ooh, man, the lights are blinding me. Turn it down. We have a God, and I really believe, I really believe some folks just need to see some things. But then on the other hand, I remember Somewhere I read in the book of Luke, I think it was, even if somebody came back from the dead, they wouldn't believe. How many read that in the scriptures? So I say, well, I'll scrap that then. Faith. Faith. You believe by faith. By faith. I believe that God is. By faith, I believe he is a man that does not lie. By faith. Faith, I believe that he lives within me. By faith, I live within him. By faith, I'll be caught up in the resurrection. By faith, I am more than a conqueror. By faith, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. By faith, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. So God has given us what we need in his faith and believing. Simple, not complicated. Okay, let's go a little bit further there to the next verse. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, who kept talking with him, talking with Jesus. Now, there they are. They're caught up. Jesus' appearance changed. It's glowing. And, 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 and Peter, James, and John is looking, and they see Moses and Elijah, and they're, all, they're in the air. Peter, 
Come here. Look, I see it. James, look. Yeah, I see it. Children of faith, look. I see it. Right in my mind, I can see it. How many can see it? Never see your hands. Look at how the people see it. Wow. Powerful. Next verse. And they were talking. Then Peter began to speak. Peter, bless Peter's heart. He's out there in front. He's out there in front. He's the first one jumps out the boat. He's the first one in a lot of he's, he spoke it uh, on the day of Pentecost. And then there's times he spoke that he shouldn't have. We won't go into that. Then Peter began to speak and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good and delightful that we are here. If you approve, I will put up three boots. How many of you know Tabernacle, they built the boots? How many remember that? Tabernacle, they built the boots? Okay, that's in, um, I think it's in sep September, somewhere like that. And they would go out, and, and that would be their way. They would stay in, in the booths and all and celebrate uh, Tabernacle, their harvest. Look what it says. And here, if you approve, I will put up three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Next. Now, here we are. We're all on the mountain. Now, when you read the Bible, just see yourself there. Man, you just see yourself there. Five minutes, i got to let you go. Man, it's so good to see you, Peter. I don't know John. I think he's John. Where's Peter at in here? There's Peter over here. Hey, Peter. Good to see you, Pana. Good to see you, Pana. Yeah, that's, 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 that's James. Yeah, yeah, James there. Where's Jesus at? He's around here somewhere. He's glowing. They're all glowing. What an experience. Hey, wait a minute. We're talking about people that are eyewitness. Peter, James, and John, you're either the biggest liar in the world or you tell them the truth. How many believes that he's telling the truth? Sure. See, you've got to nail that down. This is not no fairy tale that we're talking about. We're talking about eternity. We're talking about life in heaven or life in hell. We're talking about God who is real, and we can know him right now. I fellowship, I fellowship with God 24-7. 24-7. First thing in the morning when I get up, I say, good morning, Jesus, or good morning, Father. I start my conversation with, with the Lord. Then I look at my wife. Good morning, baby. And she says, good morning, honey bunny. <laughs> Come on, church. Come alive, will you? Well, I don't say that. I say, good morning, baby. Well, whatever, but you're, at least you're recognizing. And they recognized what was going on. And they put it down. They wrote it down. Matthew wrote it down for us. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. These things have been written that you might read and believe and understand that we have eternal life. That this is not a fairy tale. This is not something we just come and practice every Sunday. No, this is something that's real. Real in my life. Real in your life. This is the real thing. He's alive, he's not dead, and he's coming soon. And there's eyewitnesses to that. Oh, you read the scriptures and see all the eyewitnesses that are in the Bible. I got, a, I got sheets of it up there talking about eyewitnesses, people that was there, people that saw him, people that felt him, people that loved him, people that was healed, people that, that was, uh, came alive because of him. He's real. And he lives in you, and he lives in me. And he's alive forevermore. No fairy tale, truth. Wow, eyewitnesses. I'm going to close on this. And somebody said amen. <sighs> Verse 
God and, and, and Susan and me have been privileged to experience many things in God over the years. And I'm bearing witness. We were worshiping God years ago on Meadowcliff Avenue. I'm sitting in my chair here. Susan's over here, and we're worshiping God. And uh, all of a sudden, the Lord passed by in front of me. It was like a second. He went in front of me. And I felt him. I, listen, when God shows up, you on the floor. And I hope you'll experience that. You on the floor. You're not going to say, mm, and somebody might be looking. You on the floor. You read the scriptures. They fall to their face and worshiped him. When you see him, God allowed me to see a glimpse, maybe a second, a second and a half. Boy, if it had been just, I don't know if I could have taken it. But he come by me, I'm sitting in a chair, I'm on the floor, and what I saw of the Lord was the purity of Jesus Christ. I saw that aspect of his purity. One glimpse of him in glory. Folks, you don't become an unbeliever. You can't help from believing he is real, he's alive, and he changes men's lives today. And he's changed mine. And I don't mind getting up on the house, stop and tell it. If you'll listen, if you don't listen, I'll speak anyway. But he came across, and it so revolutionized my life at that moment. I fell on the floor, and all I could do was worship him. Worship him. Out of the depths of my being, I worshiped God Almighty. One little glimpse. And Susan reached over to touch me, and God spoke to her. And I want you to tell the congregation, we'll have two witnesses. Would you stand up, sugar? Precious one. She's experiencing it right now. <laughs> Tell us what you experienced in that, darling. I reached over to touch you, and God spoke, don't touch him. So I sat back down in my chair <laughs> immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't understand why God spoke to her. And it really doesn't matter. Thank you, darling. What, what were you going to say, hon? Huh? Okay. I am not here because I believe in a bunch of fairy tales. I'm here because you're looking at a man that's been touched by God. A man that's been called by God. Not by man, but by God Almighty. And I don't know what you see. But I know whom I have believed in. And I know he is able to keep that which I've entrusted to him. And I move and have my being because of him. And all I can say is, I believe in this year, somehow God would grant each person in this assembly to behold him like you've never seen him before. I know we walk by faith, we believe by faith, we accept it by faith. And I thank God that God gave me that little experience. Because I tell you what, it changed my life. And from that time on, I became more of a pure man. Because the attribute of my Lord, attribute, is that right? As close to it. Uh, attribute, is that right? <laughs> Was imparted into me. People don't understand when you read the word of the living God, it's spirit. It can be imparted into you. That's why I'm encouraging people, not some religious uh, thing you got to do to be saved. We're not talking about that. We are talking about a closer walk with Jesus. We're talking about moving into the spiritual realm where we begin to see blind eyes open. We see dead people rise from the dead. I believe that. That's the type of man that I am. I believe what the Word of the Lord says. I believe these eyewitnesses, and I haven't even covered just a very few of them. 
not the apostle, Paul, apostle Paul, the 500 people. Is this battery running down? My voice said. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm talking that I believe this year as we spend time in the Word of God each day, you drink water every day, you drink water from the Word every day. I'm encouraging you to do that. I'm not, I'm not demanding. I'm not commanding. I, with all that's within me, I know when people are spending time in the Word. I just know. I could be around you, and I can tell if you're not in the Word. And can I be honest? How many wants me to be honest? Some of you are not spending no time in the Word. Am I lying? I'm not scolding you, but you're missing. You're missing what God wants to impart into you through His Word. I encourage you, start with the book of Ephesians. Read it. Reread it. Keep your Bible open somewhere where the kids can read it. You can read it. If somebody comes in your house, read that. Tell me what you get out of it. Be bold. What's that song, honey? Let's sing that song. Come on. What's that? Be bold. Be courageous. What was that? Let's see you do it, baby. Come on. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid. I am not dismayed. Cause I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on, let's walk in faith and victory. For the Lord our God is with us. I believe she's getting it. I believe she's getting it. You either got it or you ain't got it. I'm here to get you to get it. Because it's alive, it's real, and you can have all you want. Get bold. That messed up. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. For the Lord your God is with you. I am not afraid. I am not dismayed. Cause I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on, let's walk in faith and victory. For the Lord our God is with us. And in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Rise to your feet. Turn to somebody and say, I got news for you. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. And he's alive in me. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of God.